Hey guys, and welcome back to another branch in Forge tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a very basic QTE system or quick time event system. And when I say basic, I mean basic. So this isn't going to be quite an advanced one. This is simply, we're going to be running down here and we're going to have a prompt on screen to jump over this, move right, move left and jump again. So it is technically a QTE and if you don't do it in time, then if we collide with this, essentially we're going to ragdoll and have an end game. So these mechanics are kind of more similar to an endless runner. However, again, you can interpret this however you want, use this code however you want. This doesn't specifically have to be what I set it up to be. You can use the code and change it to have it do whatever you like. So hopefully you get something good out of this and hopefully you learn something from it. So this is what we make today. And again, of course, this does still work as a QTE system. It just depends, obviously, how you want the QTE to act. So without further ado, let me show you what we're going to make today. So what I'm going to do is just walk forwards. We get moved into the area. It says QTE starts. It says jump. We jump, move right move left and then jump again and you see we then ended and that was running dead ahead for me and I couldn't move forwards backwards or anything like that and then also if we were to collide with one of these objects instead so if we didn't actually jump when we're supposed to what's going to happen is we're just going to fall over like that and then you can add an end screen on there as well however I'm not going to do that in this video I've just simply got the ragdoll like that so if I go into this one again we're just going to get ragdoll so this is what we make today, again very simple, however it is still functional for what it's supposed to be and in the future I can either make a more advanced one which I'll spend more time on or I can set up an endless runner as well if you'd like. So like I say we're going to be making this today so let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to set up the widget which will appear on screen to tell the player to either jump, move right, move left or anything like that. You don't need this if you don't want, however it's nice to have it on there and most systems do have it. So we're going to set this up just to get it out of the way and done with. So in my folder where I want all this, I'm going to right click, go to user interface, and create a widget blueprint. I'm going to name this one just simply QTE widget like so, and I'm going to open it up straight away. In here, what I'm going to do is add a text. So I'm going to add text in there. I'm going to set the size X to be 1920, so it takes up the whole screen. And the size Y, I'll set something like 70, just to give us a bit more space. And then up the font size to about 40, like that. Just makes it look nice and big. And then I'm also just going to move this to the center of the screen, so I'll anchor it to the bottom middle and then move it so it's perfectly lined up with that as well, like so. And then I'm going to scroll down, change the justification to be in the middle, so it is lined in the middle center like that. So I think that's going to be good for where I want the text to appear. What I might also do is give it a nice outline, which should be here. We have outline color and outline size, I'm going to set that to about 4. You can see if we zoom in, that's what it's going to look like. So again, very basic text, however this is what we really need. What we want to do next is scroll back up on the text, and when we have content text, we're going to hit bind, create binding. And this is going to allow us to change what text is in here for whether we want to jump or move right, left, anything like that. We're going to right click on the return value, promote to variable, and I'm going to name this one QTE prompt. And so that's what makes most sense for me, but you can name this absolutely whatever you like just have it connected to the return value there, compile and save, and that is all we need to do. So whenever we change this text value here, the text on screen is also going to change. So that's the widget set up. So we can compile, save, and close that like so. And what I'm going to set up next is I'm going to set up all the different movements and the starting and the ending of the QTE, and this is all going to be in a character blueprint. So we're going to go to that character blueprint. So for me, that's content, third person VP, blueprints, third person character, but for you, it could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. And what I'm going to do is just find some empty space over on the right down here. And what I'm going to do first is create the widget. So I'm going to right click and add a custom event. So all of these are pretty much going to be using custom events so that we can call them by different blueprints very easily whenever we want. So I'm going to name this custom event create QTE widget like so. Out of this, I'm going to create the widget with the class being our QTE widget down here. Return volume, I'm going to right click promote to variable naming that QTE widget reference and using this this is how we can then change the text that we just made in there so we can change what text is on screen and for example to do that we're going to set QTE prompt here I'm going to connect that there I'm going to set the text to be QTE started now you can name that whatever you want if anything so you don't have to have something there but I think that's gonna be good for me out of the widget reference again I'm also going to add to viewport so the player can now see it on their screen as well. And so that is going to create the widget. So I'm going to 
select that, hit C to comment it, just name create QTE widget like so, so we know what it does from far away. Underneath this, I'm going to create the code to start and end it. So I'm going to right click, add another custom event, naming this QTE start. I'm probably going to start pretty much all of these custom events with QTE so they're easy to access later on. Out of this, I'm going to set a boolean to be true, so I'm going to create a boolean, so hit plus variable, naming this one QTE active, question mark like so, keeping it as a boolean. Default value is obviously false, I'm going to set that to be true off of QTE start there. Off of this, we're also going to set another value. This is going to be a float value, so I'm going to hit the plus variable here, I'm going to name this one forward, or FW, axes value. Again, making this a float and the reason I'm doing this is so that the player will always be walking forwards during the QTE so the player doesn't have control of it which is going to always be moving forward so if you don't want that don't do this part however I think that's quite good to have so I'm going to do that I'm going to set this to be a value of 1 so it's always moving forwards and then just after this I'm going to right click add another custom event naming it QTE end and out of this I'm going to set QTE active to be false, so unticked, and get a reference to the QTE widget reference there, and simply remove from parent to take the widget off of our screen, like so, so we can no longer see the prompts. And I'm just going to select both of these, hit C to comment them, and name them start slash end QTE, like so. Now again, this isn't technically going to do that, this is just how we want to do it, and we'll call these functions later on of when we want to do it. So we compile, save, and that's the basic starting blocks of it set out. However, what I want to do now is set up the main functionality of the movements. So I want to be able to move left and right, but I don't want to be using the normal left and right movements as that will go all the way left or all the way right and it won't look good or act well for what I want. So what I'm going to do instead is be using the kind of lane system. Again, this is kind of where it's similar to endless runners. So what we're going to do is essentially, if this is our track, we'll have one lane, two lanes, three lanes so we can move between three lanes like that again this might not be how you'd want to do it but it's how I'm going to set it out and show you how to do it as well so we'll go on our character blueprint under here I'm going to right click add a custom event I'm going to name this one QTE move right like so out of this I'm going to hold down B left click to get a branch the condition of this we want to see which lane we're in so I'm going to create another variable there naming this one lane num and we can keep that as a float, but I'm going to change it to be an integer instead, so as a whole number. And the default value you're going to want to set to be whichever lane you're going to be in by default. So I'm going to have lane 1, 2, and 3, just to keep it easy, the easy numbers there. And I want to start in the middle lane. The middle lane is going to be 2. So I'm going to set this value to be 2, like that. So I'm going to get lane num. Out of this, since we're moving right, we don't want to go above 3. So we're going to get a less than integer or well, the integer being three whatever your max amount of lanes is meaning we can't go out of the lanes so we can't go too far right and we only want to come out of the true of this branch because again if it is three we don't want to be able to move any further over so we're going to cut the lane number again and get an increment integer plugging that into the true and then we're going to set lane num out of that increment there and then what an increment does is it essentially just adds one to an integer so if let's say we're in lane one we want to move right, it's going to put us in lane 2 and set that to be there as well so we know which lane we're in. So what I'm going to do is hold down B, left click to get another branch, plugging that in there. And the condition of this is going to be QTE active, so we only want to be able to move right if this is active. So actually what I'll do is I'll put the QTE active at the start, so we want to check for this first, because otherwise it will be adding these up when we don't want it to. So I'll put that there, QTE active at the start, coming out of true into the rest of the code so it's only going to fire off the code if we actually are in the QTE like so. So we should have something like this, QTE is active, true, lane num is less than 3, true. And now we want to actually move lanes so we can move the player. So to do that we're going to right click and get actor location like so. The return value, I'm going to right click, promote to variable, naming this one starting lock for starting location, and I'm going to set that after there like that. Out of here, I'm going to add a timeline. I'm going to name this one move right t for move right timeline. Make sure that goes in the play from start, not the play. 
then we're going to double click this to open it up. I'm going to add a float track. I'll name this move track like so. I'm going to set the length to be 0.1 so it's very quick to move over. And this is just so that it doesn't just snap over, it does smoothly move over, not just snap and teleport. And again, I want it to be very quick, so 0.1 is good for me. However, you can customize this to get what's good for you. I'm going to right click and add a key to curve float with a time of zero, value also of zero. And then I'm going to right click, add another key to curve float with a time of 0.1, is that our maximum time, and a value of one as well, like so. So we can compile, and that's all we need to do in there. So we can then close the timeline like so. What I'm going to do is come out of the move track here, get a lerp vector. A, we want to have as our starting location. So I'm going to get the starting location there, putting that into A. And what I might do is I'll put that under there for the moment so we can use it later on in the code. And then for B, we want to obviously be moving right from that location. So we're going to get starting location again. And out of this, I'm going to get a vector plus a vector. Now I'm going to add 150 on the X. And now you're going to want to customize this for you. So what I'm doing is that I'm going to be moving in this direction here, which is the X. And you can tell by that, say, place on a cube. So sorry, I'm moving this way. So we can place on a cube, you can see the X is there. So the X is this way. So I want the Q to E to be going this way, so I'm on the X. And I have 150, because that's the amount of units I found good. So if you're going on the Y, add it on the Y. And if you want it to be more or less than 150, change that as well. So I'm going to delete that as that was only a reference. Go back in here and add 150 on the X. Sorry, I'm adding on the Y. So that's my bad. So everything I just said, keep that the same. However, I'm on the Y, not the X. So again, whichever axis you're on, so the Y, you do it on there perfectly like so. And go back in here and connect that into B. So we're going to be adding that value in the direction we want to go in. And then out of the return value of this, we're going to set actor location, plugging that into the update of the timeline there. And now that is going to move the player perfectly like so. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to move the player from the original location, 150 units over to the next location in the next lane we want to go into. And it's going to smoothly do it via a timeline as well. So now we've got moving right, we just want to move left. And this is very similar code. So what we can do is just select all of this minus the get actor location, start location, and start location there. Select all, control C, control V to duplicate it, putting it in down here instead. So I'm going to put it there. And then we just need to change some values. So obviously I'm going to start with right clicking, adding a custom event, naming it QTE move left, connecting that into there like so. QTE active, we want to leave the same, same as the lane number, except we want to check instead of it's less than three, we want to see if it is greater than, so an integer is greater than an integer, and greater than one, as that's my minimum lane. Whatever the minimum lane is for use, whether it's zero, one, two, put that in there. And then instead of adding, we want to take away. So come out of lane number and get a decrement or decrement integer instead. Again, coming out of true, connecting that into there like so. So now if we go to the left, we're going to be taking one away. As my lanes go one, two, three, from left to right. Starting location is again going to be get actual location there. And now for the starting location here, what we're going to do is instead of an addition, we're going to get a vector minus a vector. I'm going to be leaving it as 150 in the Y though. And then that will go into the B of that lerp there. So we don't need that one, sorry. I'm going to the B of the lerp and A will be the starting location again there. And so this is the basic code that we have here for moving left and right. So I hope you understand that. What we're doing is essentially seeing if we can move left and right. If we can, we're updating the code to let it know which lane we're in. So again, we can check whether we can or can't move. And then we're going to actually be moving, starting from the player's current location into the next lane, which we're deciding using this value here. And it's going to smoothly move it via this timeline track that we've created. So we compile and save that. What I'm going to do is select this, hit C to comment it, and then this move right slash left, like so, and again, compile and save. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it there for this episode. So when I recorded the whole thing, it was quite long. And so because I only want this to be a basic one for you to understand quite easily, I'm going to split it up into two different parts. So obviously in today's video, we've done all of this. We've made the widget, added it onto screen, restarted and ended the QTE, and enabled the player to move left and right. And then next time, we're going to be finishing off and then putting all of these things together. So we'll create the ragdoll, being able to actually 
like I say, put them together so we can actually run continuously forwards, move left and right in the lanes, have obstacle BPs and all of this good stuff as well as the actual object BP. So like I say, that's going to be coming up tomorrow. So let me know in the comments down below what you kind of thought of this. I'm not too sure how well this is going to go down. So on one hand, it's quite good, it's quite useful to know all of this good stuff. On the other, like I say, it's quite a basic system. So let me know your thoughts about it in the comments down below. I'd love to check them out. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.